don't know if you've noticed or not, but my garden here at Tiny Farm is on a bit of a slope. While this is good for calf muscles, it does make the management of any rainfall I get very important. We love rain. It gives life to our plants. But if we get too much of it too quickly, then it can do untold damage. Basically what it's doing is it's picking up valuable soil and your fertilisers and it's dumping it down in your waterways. So the trick is to allow it to sink in. You can turn off the rain now. There are many ways of slowing water down on your property, depending on your budget and your site. One really effective way is to create barriers. It can be things like garden beds, paths and retaining walls. If you want to create a retaining wall that's fast and easy to make, straw bales are a great solution. All I'm doing is putting these bales on their side at the edge of the bed, on the path that I've levelled out. What I'm going to do is build two tiers worth. That way, the first tier will protect my soil from running downhill, and the second tier will act as a wind defence for my taller crop of broad beans that are going to go in this bed. I've laid them off centre like bricks. Just makes them a bit more structural. But they still have a bit of wobble in them. So I found the best way to secure them is to use a hardwood stake. I just feed it through the back of the baling twine and into the baling twine of the second one. Straighten it up and then you can whack it in. Well, they're all secure. Now all I'm doing is turning over the soil and backfilling against the straw bale wall. By doing this, I'm levelling the bed. And level surfaces always trap water better than slope surfaces. Well, that was quick and easy. They will break down though. They are a short-term solution, but I get about two crops out of these. So that's about six months. And once they break down, you can simply pull them apart and spread them around, and make beautiful mulch. Another medium turn retaining solution that's fairly inexpensive is the old Hessian slug. Now, if you're interested in building one, I did one for the show last year. So if you go onto our website and look for the story Living Edge, you should be right. Basically, all they are is a bit of Hessian filled with organic matter, in this case, mushroom compost, and then rolled up into a tube and put in place. Now this one here has done a great job of holding back my mulch and my soil from washing downhill. Now I reckon that's enough on going up with retaining, so let's go down. And I'm talking about swales. Now swales might seem like a bit of a fancy word, but really all they are is a trench or even a hole dug into the contour lines of your property. Really, they're easy and they're cheap. So cheap, they're free. All you really need is a shovel. The way it works is any surface water that falls onto this path finds the lowest point, which is the swale. And then it recharges back into your bed around the root zone of your plants where it's needed. Now you can leave them like this or you can plant them out with trees, shrubs, or in this case, veggies. Another great way of stopping your soil from flowing downhill is to use nature's blanket mulch. What it does is it slows the water down and it allows it to soak into the ground. I use a heavy mulch here because anything lighter than this would just flow away. If your gradient is steeper than this, you may want to consider using something like hessian laid out and pinned to the ground and then planted into it. Because ultimately the best way of stopping your soil from flowing downhill is to use plants. For those of you with sloping sites, I hope I've given you some solutions. You can either use one or a combination of any of those approaches and you'll be well on your way to protecting your soil, your plants and your waterways. Oh, come on!